Let's see how much we do to our mons. We're looking at 312, boys. VIPFF commented on my Ultimate Warboy video asking me to do a guide on Gala Longbraids. So here she is, Gala Longbraids. I figured why not? I've never actually really used her. I never actually really... God, where, where is my... I'm speaking American English today. Gala Longbraids, a really strong epic champion, Void Affinity from the Dwarves faction. She hits pretty damn hard. She's like a really good champion, right? And I've seen her used in even Plat Arena because she just does so well. Like she, I don't think she gets talked about enough today. I've seen a few videos about her with people, you know, explaining that she has insane multipliers, that she hits very hard, that she is a good solid epic champion. And, you know, she's really good for something like Faction Wars or Centranos if you're looking for a damage dealer, her A1 attacks an enemy once each hit ignoring 30 percent of the target's defense places a shield on herself and the value of the shield is equal to 20 percent of the damage inflicted she hits hard she ignores defense and then she's also going to shield herself because as you can see right here she um has a relatively low defense She's uh, not going to survive too long, so she needs the, pro uh, the proper support or she needs to kill everybody before they can even do anything. Attacks one enemy on the A2, ignoring 50% of the target's defense when attacking under a shield buff. When she has a shield, she's already going to be using, uh, or not using, sorry. When she has a shield on herself, she is going to ignore 50%, and then she also heals by the damage inflicted and then places a buff on herself equal to any surplus heal for three turns. So she's keeping shields on herself, which is pretty nice with her moves. And you could even put like a little mini shield thing on her if you wanted to, I think. Right, so that you ensure every single time she hits, you know, you're keeping that shield up time. Attacks one enemy three times, each hit ignores the target's defense. Grants an extra turn if this champion has full HP after using this skill. It's on a four, uh, three turn cooldown. So she hits hard. She's got some good mechanics helping you roll into each other. Like the synergy between the, the trifecta of skills here is probably like one of the quintessential setups builds for a champion that Polarium has put together. Like an awesome champion. We're going to take a look at her skills, her masteries real quick. As always, do not blindly copy masteries. But if you want to go ahead and blindly copy these masteries, feel free. Now, I initially took Giant Slayer with her for some reason that I can't remember. And now that I'm looking at it, we're going to redo this. So here's what we're doing. We're taking crit rate. We're taking crit damage. We're going to make sure that we are doing our best to take this Ruthless Ambush here for nuking abilities. So we can take this Shield Breaker and then we're going to take this here. We're going to take Life Drinker. We're going to take cycle of violence to make sure that we're having a 30 percent chance to decrease cooldowns of one of her skills because they hit really hard we're gonna take bring it down we can also take kill streak she's gonna be an arena champion and we're taking helm smasher we also want to take methodical so that her a1 gets an extra 10 percent over prolonged battles usually battles aren't going to last that long to begin with though now in terms of what other masteries you want to go for i think the best option is probably going to be down the defense because you want to make sure that she's taking improved parry to decrease the damage received by eight percent because crit hits are the ones that hit hard and kill you however now that i'm realizing i did this here uh maybe rejuvenation could have been a good choice as well but you know it's completely fine we could also take block debuffs we want to make sure we're trying to make our way over to this here delayed death. We want damage mitigation. So we're just going to have to take this. And then we're going to take counterattack masteries as well. You could also go down this way for rejuvenation straight down here to resurgent to have a chance to remove a debuff and then do this and then do that. And then if you didn't want to choose one of these, you could also choose deterrence for some extra counterattack. So. She also has an aura, increase 25%, ally attack, it's pretty good. Remember, she's an epic champion. Crushing Rend, I don't recommend Crushing Rend on her, but 
so let me tell you what I would recommend, right? I think Phantom Touch would probably be a good option. Nothing wrong with Cruelty as well. If you guys have a better blessing, let me know. I put Crushing Rest, I guess there's something here maybe. I, I haven't really checked this place out. But I put Crushing Rand on her because I don't use her. And I figured one of these days, I'll probably get a six or a five star blessing for her. Now, Crushing Rand, I don't think it's terrible, especially if you assume that you're going to just one shot somebody. The way this works is Gala, with this blessing, Crushing Rand is going to ignore a percentage of the target's defense. That percentage is equivalent to every 50 levels that the target has. 1% for every 50 levels. The higher you go, the less the barrier to entry is. So 40 levels, 25 levels, 10 levels. Other things to note, with a lower blessing, you're only ignoring the first hit. So Gala only has one chance to smack and kill to ignore, but I mean, she's already ignoring quite a bit. And then on the third blessing, it's still one hit. Fifth, uh, fifth star blessing, the first two hits, so you have two chances. But six star blessing is going to allow you to ignore um, with every single hit that you do. That's why a lot of people go into a Hydra with Crushing Ren once they get to a six star blessing. Other than that, they usually recommend something like Cruelty or Phantom Touch because it's dependent, the, the bonus damage is going to be dependent on the champion's attack. So if Gala has like 5,000 attack, that bonus damage from, from Phantom Touch procs, that's an extra 5,000 damage. I think it also works against an extra hit against the, the Fire Knight, I think. So we talked about our skills, we talked about our masteries, I gave you some context. Now we're going to talk about how to build Gala Long Braids. So... When it comes to building Gala, I like to use the Hell Hades Optimizer. It just saves time. I am, I could include equipped artifacts, but I'm not going to. But I'm, well, here's what we'll do first, right? What we're looking for for Gala Long Braids, and these are stats to work towards. These are not going to be the stats that are available to everybody. Whenever I build a Nuker, the standard route that I follow is 5,000 minimum for attack. If it's a defense-based champion, I do 5,000 defense. If it's an HP-based champion, I try to go 100k. Speed for my nukers is 220. Crit rate, 100%. Notice how if you're using the Hell Hades Optimizer, I put it in damage mode so that the builds are ranked based on the highest possible damage. Hell Hades' Optimizer is automatically going to sort through it for you. Um, based off of that with that pretext 250 crit damage is the bare minimum if you can do better do better if you can't do this you could also you know aim a little bit lower if you're a newer player shoot for something like 3000 attack go 180 on the speed like 200 on crit damage and you keep walking down each stat until you find something that works for you but for now we're going to do 250 we'll do 220 and then we'll do 5k sometimes if i'm a little short from getting these stats i walk it down a little bit knowing that i'm going to glyph or oil up when it comes to gala long braids or any damage dealer it does not hurt to continue to try to put them in more ignore damage gear so you know merciless could be a good one i actually haven't used merciless all that much so i could be wrong i, I have to check to see but I initially think Savage and Cruel, or you could do Lethal and Cruel. Another option is going to be Instinct and Cruel. And uh, let's see, is there anything else? Basically any set that ignores damage is something that's going to be beneficial to your nukers. Some more so than others. For an example, Cruel set gives you an increase to attack. So if you're trying to build Harima and you are looking for ignore damage mechanics, Cruel, may not be like the most ideal situation whereas if you put her in instinct or lethal or savage where it just gives you that ignored defense mechanic it might be a lot better just you know a little sidebar there so obviously i'm gonna put savage and cruel on gala long braids if i have the gear it's quite likely that i don't with the stats that i'm asking for but we'll see 
If you can't get Savage and Cruel to work out, maybe try Savage and just any other set. You know, it doesn't have to be Savage and Cruel. We're just trying to get the best possible. So let's go ahead and click Optimize to see what pops up. Nothing pops up. I know that if I were to include and take gear off of other champions, definitely something would pop up. In fact, a lot pops up. In my absolute best gear, if I wanted to build Gala in my best gear, we're looking at 6800 attack, very low defense, like she's super squishy. She could hit, she could get hit with a potato and she would fall. 232 speed and 300 crit damage in both Savage and Cruel. That's taking gear off of Taurus, Trunda, Coldheart, Rotos, and oh, I said Candy already. So we're definitely not going to do that. We're going to just not include any of those things here and we're going to take off cruel because i don't think we're going to have that option to make it happen and it looks like it's just not happening with the parameters that i've set so i might have to go back to including artifacts and i'm going through this process here not editing it so that you can see what my thought process is as i'm going through dealing with trying to gear champions. So for the sake of this video, I might even consider just taking gear off of my champions real quick, just to give you guys a better idea of uh, what I'm you know, aiming for. So we're going to take gear off of these champions here. Actually, let me take a screenshot so I can put it back on them when I'm done. That way nothing goes awry. Because I'm going to unequip all this gear off of Gala once I'm done. So, equip. Thankfully, the Hell Hades optimizer just automatically equips, and I'm able to not spend the menial three to five minutes it takes to gear the champion. We can go ahead. They really want to shove this down our throat. They really want to shove this down our throat. But no. And then, if I wanted to, I could even ascend this, give me attack. We got defense. We'll take defense. Nothing wrong with extra defense. She's already squishy. And we got HP on you. We'll take extra survivability. But I would re-roll this once I start doing Sand Devil again. I'm just saving for the Asgard event. Same thing here. You want attack. So let me go over the pieces of gear real quick. You're looking for attack. You want attack on the... Well, for because this was with Rodos, I put the HP on him. I re-rolled this for HP. But for pretty much all of their champions are going to want to use attack on attack. But the attack is so minuscule. So, you know, there's that. Uh, the top 30 chests can only reroll onto HP defense or flat attack. Keep that in mind. But if you could get attack, I would go for extra attack. Crit damage. The ascension, you're going to want to have... You're going to want to have crit rate. Or sorry, crit damage. You want to build your champions with crit rate coming from substats from other... Uh, pieces of gear other subbies so if you can get crit damage on crit damage that's the ideal situation you want attack of course you're getting attack here you want attack here as well taking crit damage crit rate some speed extra attack speed on speed is good you could also do speed on attack if you don't care about going that fast but in the higher echelons of arena in pvp i'm talking like plat level or uh, live arena like higher gold live arena you're going to want to make sure you're going as fast as possible Attack on the ring. Crit damage on crit damage with extra attack wherever you can find it here. Attack on the banner with extra attack. Let's see, can we get more attack here? And we get res. Nothing wrong with res. It's okay. So now her total stats are going to be at 6,800, 232 speed, 100% crit rate, and then almost 300% crit damage. By the way, when I was talking about the speed for uh, plat arena, uh, I've placed plat several times. I don't bother with it anymore because the rewards are kind of eh, unless you're like top three. But I was doing fine with going around 220, 230 in speed. Uh, I wouldn't go below that. I wouldn't go below 210. Just make sure you have proper support. But I know a lot of people who perform at the higher levels of gold live arena, which is kind of a different ball game there. 260, 270 is kind of where you want to be. All right, so now that we've built out Gala, obviously what we're gonna be looking for is how does she do in Arena? Because this is why you would build her out for Arena. Let's go ahead and take her 
here and we'll just take Sun Wukong out, placing in Gala Long Braids instead. I'm going to take it off auto and then we're going to see if we can outspeed this Armand. So we have increased attack. We're going to push back turn meter as well as place everybody's skills on cooldown. We're going to stun everybody with Armands, except for Armands because he has that kind of resist. Then we're going to actually... No, let's leave UDK up. We're going to leave UDK up so you can see how much Gala does against UDK. But we're going to sheep. We're going to sheep Armands. So Gala has her A1, her A2, her A3. Let's start off with her A3. It's going to attack three times, ignoring 25%, maybe even more because she's in Savage and Cruel, and she also has the chance to proc Helm Smasher. If she has full HP, which she will after using this skill, she's gonna give herself an extra turn. That is really cool because it helps us roll into the next move. So 340 or 3400, 57 UDK goes to sleep. Her A2, again, ignoring 50%. When under a shield buff, she is not under a shield buff. So that was kind of my bad there. But she is going to heal and then place a shield on any extra heals that she gets. So let's see it over here. So Crushing Rend, she healed quite a bit. I don't know why I said Crushing Rend. I mean, it procced, but yeah. Look at these spinning lightning orbs here. Let's put this on us. Gonna hit the sheep. Hit it again. Some Wukong's gonna come back. Now we're gonna hit him with the A1 to see what that looks like. Does she, uh, let's see, uh... A1, 5600. Crushing Ren procced. Hit the sheep. Our mods back. Let's put the increased attack on us again. Push back Sun Wukong so he can't move. Now we have the shield. We're going to have the opportunity, or we are going to be ignoring 50% of the target's defense because we have the shield on. Let's see how much we do to our mons. We're looking at 312, boys. 312. Let's boost turn meter even further. Let's push back turn meter. Let's hit him, get rid of it, go on to the next fight here. Now, let's see what we do against an HP-based champion in Fatalis. What I do want to do here, though, is bring in somebody who does decrease defense and weaken. All right. Boost turn meter. Push back turn meter. Put their skills on cooldown. Decrease defense and weaken. So we have it up. She does not have a shield buff on. What we're going to do is make sure we're going to take care of... Let's take care of Arbiter, 94,000. We're not gonna use the A2 yet. We're gonna make sure we wait until we get a shield up. Let's hit Rhonda, 106. Boost turn meter. Now we have the shields on us. Maybe I should have started off with a Warlord. Let's hit this so he can't do anything. Place the block buff. Basically does nothing to Gala because we have that shield. Let's check this A2 on Fatalis. Let's slow it down so we can see it. Female Aggression, 167 on an HP-based champion. Legendary champion, 167. I don't know of any champion that has 167 HP. Down. On the block with a block out. Hit your ass with that block out. Dumping up the goal in your...